All right, so I'm gonna be filming a what I eat in the day uh, meal prep video, and um, yeah, so I got into meal prepping six days ago. I bought these really cool containers here off Amazon. If you're interested in them, um, they're super awesome. You got two sections here, ideally for protein and complex carbs, and then one large section that is good for um, vegetables. So yeah, I wanted to show off my dishes because I thought it was really cool. This is all the dishes I had to do from five days of eating food. That's all. And this dish I didn't even cook with. You know, it was just a dish that I had gotten from where I volunteer. So, um, so I had to clean that. But everything else is all I've used to eat with. <laughs> Cut back on how much I have to do dishes when I just have to do dishes the day that I meal prep and like the night before I meal prep. So my sink still has a little bit of soap in it, but I'm going to be um, prepping some pickled ginger for tomorrow so it can uh, pickle in the refrigerator. I'll show you how I go about doing that, but first let's go over the menu. So this was last week's menu. I will post the pictures, but what I ended up eating was egg scramble with cheese, a uh, roll with margarine and a fruit salad and then for lunch I had a tempeh stir fry is like Korean kind of themed with soba noodle salad and ki radish kimchi uh, for dinner I had Hawaiian fried tofu with uh, tropical fried rice with tropical fruit in it and uh, stir fry vegetables and then snacks, I had celery with asparagus, carrot sticks, and dressing. I ended up adding a um, hard-boiled egg and a cookie to that snack box. Um, and then I had apple and peanut butter, chocolate chip cookies that went in that snack box. Um, and a smoothies, hard-boiled egg with hot sauce that went in that snack box. Trail mix, um, and Takis, jicama, guacamole salsa, beans, mango. everything ended up calculating all the calories and that way you know how much everything like every portions calories are so it's so easy to enter into your my fitness pal or whatever you're using um, and then you can also see like what all nutrients you're taking in um, and yeah so that was last week so let's get to this week so this week the breakfast meal prep okay there's a lot of scribbling out because I had to revise it but the breakfast meal prep is going to be natto and uh, honey garlic like teriyaki tuna on sushi rice with cabbage nori furikake uh, soy sauce and sesame oil I had to find my furikake though because I have no idea where I put it um, that's going to be a search um, anyways and um so yeah, I'm going to make the sushi rice uh, tomorrow morning after I make my breakfast smoothie and um, then we'll give it a chance to cool before we uh, make everything else for the prep boxes, but I'm going to make the pickled ginger for this tonight and we'll I'll show you how I do that. And then for lunch, I'm having tofurkey beer brats with a bun with mustard and mayo. And then I have some leftover kraut that I made a little while back. 
and that's going to go in the box and then I'm going to put some fruit snacks and carrot sticks. And then the dinner meal prep is going to be a vegan burrito with vegan cheese and quinoa and black beans and uh, fried potatoes and onions with slices of lime and salsa. And then snacks, I have tortilla chips, which I got to make the tortilla chips from scratch, but I have some tortillas I need to use up. I have some uh, flour tortillas and some corn tortillas left over from... Um, Cinco de Mayo that I need to use up and then I'm going to make a blank, black bean salad um, to go with that and some salsa and then so far for snacks I have smoothies apples and peanut butter and granola bars um, probably trail mix will be in there somewhere too and I'm not sure what else let's get started prepping this pickled ginger. Okay, so I got two nice chunks of ginger here. We're going to cut this up in nice thin slices and pickle it. So before we do that, I want to add some rice vinegar to this um, container here. And I'm going to fill it up almost all the way. Then I'm going to add some sugar, and we should probably measure how much sugar I'm going to add, just so you get a good idea. So let's add it's about one tablespoon, two tablespoons. Let's do three tablespoons because pickled ginger is usually quite sweet. Three tablespoons of sugar and then I'm going to use about a teaspoon of salt. Mix that in there. Try and get it as dissolved as possible. Let's cut up our ginger now. So I'm going to cut off peel. Okay. So I'm going to cut it as thinly as possible. Okay, so with our pickled ginger, you want to make sure it's all submerged in the vinegar, salt, and sugar mix. And then you want to just put that in your refrigerator overnight. Okay, so I just woke up and, uh, yeah, I'm acting chipper, but I'm actually not. I feel like crawling back into bed. But I'm going to get up because I got lots of work to do today. And I'm going to make a smoothie to start out my day. So let's do that. Okay, so we are going to start out with a few ice cubes. Three ice cubes is usually good. These aren't breaking up perfectly, but that's fine. Just put some ice in there. Then we're going to add our whey protein. Of course, if you're plant-based, use a pea protein or another protein that's plant-based. And then we're going to add our flax and chia and hemp seed mix. I'm going to use about two tablespoons of that. Whoa, maybe a little more today. Uh, two tablespoons is about, I think, a hundred calories, but uh, this is going to be a little bit more than a hundred calories. Uh, let's see. Yeah, two tablespoons is a little more than 100 calories, but yeah, lots of healthy fats today. <laughs> I have this bag of frozen mixed tropical fruits that I made. It's um, bananas, papaya, pineapple, and strawberries. And mango, too. I'm going to add 
Five cup. And I have about two tablespoons of ginger here. I'm gonna cut off the outer part of the ginger. And then I have one container of um, coconut Greek yogurt and I think it said it's only 80 calories yeah so that's not bad it's pretty yummy I like this yogurt and I'm going to add a V8 energy drink as a little boost of um, energy plus um, some B vitamins. You get 20% of your B6 and your B12 from here. And I need both B6 and B12. Now typically I would add some greens, but I didn't have any greens, so I'm adding the ginger instead. And then I'm going to fill the rest with almond milk. So now we gotta blend it up. Okay, doesn't that look great? Yum. Okay. So, I'm just going to put the lid on, sip on this while I make the rice, and then I'll drink it up while the rice is finishing. Now, I'm not going to be using, like, the traditional... Um, pearl rice. I'm just going to be using what I get in my food boxes because um, I might as well. Um, and this is un enriched long grain rice. So I don't know what it's enriched with, but hey, that's cool. Okay. So, looks like it has some extra calcium, um, iron, potassium, thymine, niacin, probably the niacin because rice doesn't typically have niacin, right? And folate. I don't know. I don't really know the nutritional value of rice. I've never really looked that up. <laughs> um, I know it has lots of fiber if you eat the brown rice, but... Anyways, so yeah, let's make some sushi rice. I'm gonna go ahead and try and use this all. Looks like it's gonna be three and a half, so that means we're gonna need seven cups of water. All right, so we got our rice ready to cook. So I'm just going to put this on and plug it in and turn it on, which i got to move the tripod for that. So I will see you all in a little bit. Okay, now we're going to make our seasoning for the sushi rice. So we need some rice wine vinegar. I'm not going to measure this. I'm just going to pour a little bit in. Probably about, well, I do have a half a cup here. Let's... Let's go ahead and measure a half a cup. Half a cup should be good. And I have some sugar here. We're gonna use, let's use 
three tablespoons again pretty much about the same ratio as for the pickled ginger one two and three tablespoons of sugar and then I'm going to use about a teaspoon of salt and that's all the seasonings you need for sushi rice okay so I found my furikake I'm going to be using a salmon furikake um, you can get this at Asian import stores sometimes even regular grocery stores will carry it um, you can get whatever flavor you like I like the salmon personally then I have a little bit of these nori strips left I don't know if I have enough of them actually to be honest um, I will just use whatever I have left and our rice is done so what we need to do is take our rice put it in a glass bowl so you want to scoop out the rice and add it to the glass bowl and it should ideally be made in a glass bowl so I'm going to Add the seasoning and I think I'm gonna mix it up with the smaller spoon because I feel like that's gonna be easier as you can see it's already starting to stick together So now I'm going to put the bowl in the fridge and let it cool down completely before I start making my boxes. Okay, so our protein sources for this um, uh, meal prep are going to be tuna and soybeans from the natto and also sesame seeds. So we're going to make our tuna right now I'm going to go ahead and turn this on medium we want a little bit of sesame oil in there I'm going to add probably about two tablespoons of sesame oil now I'm going to drain this tuna into a bowl tuna water into a bowl for my kitty cat because my kitty cat loves tuna water so we got our tuna in the pan, heating that up, and then I'm going to add some sesame seeds, let's add about a tablespoon of sesame seeds. I'm using black sesame seeds, but you can use any sesame seeds. Black is just all I have right now. Then I have this uh, Frank's Red Hot um, Stingin' Honey Garlic Sauce that we're going to use like the teriyaki sauce. And this is actually pretty high calorie, so we don't want to use too much of it. One tablespoon is 35 calories. So let's do four tablespoons. One, two, three, and four. all in that honey garlic sauce 
You know, I think I might add some soy sauce to this too because it's not quite dark enough for me. So let's add two tablespoons of dark soy sauce. Now. now we just want to turn up the heat a little bit and let this cook down until it gets all uh, flaky and sticky and yummy like teriyaki. We want to shred our cabbage as finely as possible. Okay, so now we have lots of shredded cabbage we can add to our little bento boxes. Um, so I'm going to take a bowl here. We have some nacho. This is what the tuna looks like and I feel like it's pretty much done. It's starting to really dry out and like look more flaky so I'm going to go ahead and turn off the heat and now we are going to mix up our natto because we have seven portions to make and we only have four servings of natto oh look cool it did come with the mustard so this is what nacho looks like. Um, you might not be used to this kind of thing. I absolutely love it. If you like weird Asian food, then you'll probably like it too. Um, you could just skip the nacho and have like maybe some uh, soybeans or tempeh. But nacho is very good for women's health. Ooh, it smells good too. Yeah. Love that stringiness. That's it. Fermented soybean. It's uh, kind of like soybean yogurt, I would say. In a way. In a way. Okay, so I gotta make these for six days because I'm going to be busy Tuesday and Wednesday this week. So, we need six of these little boxes here. I want to make a bowl for myself too. Let's see if we can put a bowl on here. I'll put the bowl over there. All right, so let's get started here. Um, first, we'll put our cabbage and ginger in one container here. We can be kind of generous with this cabbage because we have so much of it. So we're going to add some pickled ginger on the side of the cabbage here. We 
got our pickled ginger. And now we can add our tuna. Okay, so I found the perfect thing to separate the natto from the tuna, and it's these little applesauce cups here. They should work perfectly for um, separating the natto from the tuna, and if you have these little applesauce cups, the, you know, the little mini applesauces, um, you could just um, put the applesauce in a container and snack on it later, or just reuse applesauce cups that you have already saved from applesauce you've already used. But these are perfect little dividers here. I'm going to reuse these even after I've made this. So I'm going to just take one spoonful of natto and add it to each container here. Our rice has mostly cooled down. It's still a little warm. That's okay. So, we don't need this whole thing full of rice. We can just add probably, um, yeah, let's just do one spoonful of rice, which is about one cup. I don't know, maybe we should do more than that. Maybe we should. I know I'm going to be counting the calories for it anyways. So we might as well just divide it up evenly. Got so much rice here. So let's go ahead and do another spoonful. I'm going to do a little bit more in that spoonful. That's definitely enough rice there. So two spoons full of rice. So that's about two cups of rice, which is about two servings of rice, by the way. With my rice bowl, I'm gonna go ahead and scoot this down here. With my rice bowl, I'm gonna go ahead and make my rice bowl for breakfast. So I want to add, let's add my cabbage first. And we're going to add my ginger. Oh, we lost a piece of ginger. That's a fail. And then we're going to add my tuna. And then we're going to add my natto. Yummy. Now we need to add our sea vegetables. So first I'm going to sprinkle everything with uh, furikake. I'm going to put that on the rice. We'll get a little more protein from the salmon and the furikake on that.
Okay. And now we need our nori strips. Just going to add one at a time. Two for most of them. Two of them only get one. But that's okay because we have this mustard and I'll put the mustard in the ones that only get one. And I'll put the mustard in a couple others too. Okay and then we want a little bit of soy sauce and sesame oil on top of the bowl I'm eating today. Not much though, just a little Dibble dibble. Well, that was a lot of uh, soy sauce. But yeah, here we go. Here is our rice bowl and bento boxes for breakfast. Yum. And of course, if I want more soy sauce or sesame oil, I can add it when I eat breakfast on the other days. And these should stay good for six days. Um, really, you wouldn't want to put them in there for more than five days, but <laughs> I'm going to risk it because I have to. Um, but yeah, the six days is definitely pushing it. <laughs> Um, anyways, um, I'm going to go eat and enjoy breakfast now, and then I'm going to go for a walk. So we are going to be making our black bean salad and um, tortilla chips. So let's start out with the black bean salad. So I'm going to be using two cans of black beans, a can of corn, a red onion diced, uh, a lemon juice squeezed and minced garlic so I'm gonna do that all real fast and then mix it all up and show you what it looks like okay so we are going to finish up our salad um, so I ended up um, rinsing the beans and the corn because I just wanted it to be a little more cleaner and look nicer and then I also use um, four cloves of garlic so let's add our seasonings first so I'm going to add a tablespoon of chili powder maybe a little bit more and a tablespoon of cumin powder and half a tablespoon of adobo seasoning and then I have this salsa left over from uh, Cinco de Mayo, it's still good, I already checked it. I used really fresh um, cilantro and tomatoes and everything was really fresh. So it's super fresh. I'm going to add, let's see, two, let's do three heaping tablespoons of salsa in there and mix this all up. Now we are going to make our tortilla chips. So um, I have, let's see how many tortillas is this? I think this is eight tortillas. Let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, yeah, eight tortillas. And I'm going to make some chips with it. I'm going to just cut them straight like this. I'll probably get more chips out this way. Okay. 
Okay. I should have cut that on the cutting board, but yellow. <laughs> oh my god, that is so cringy. Okay, so let's, um, oh, I lost a chip. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take some olive oil and... I'm just gonna, oh, and we need to turn on our oven. Um, we're gonna turn on 350. And I'm just gonna spread out mm, probably about a tablespoon of olive oil on the pan. I'm gonna take this brush, brush out the olive oil. could spread it out with a paper towel instead. And just lay out the tortilla chips. You know, I'm going to go ahead. Let's see here if I can do this. I was trying to think of how do I get the tahine on both sides. I think I'm going to go ahead and just sprinkle tahine on the bottom here and we'll see if it gets absorbed on both sides. So, lay out our chips. Okay, I'm going to take some olive oil, drizzle that on again. Up. So that's probably another couple tablespoons. But this is going to be a lot healthier than deep frying your tortilla chips. So I'm just going to. All this. Just pat those with the brush so we make sure we get a little bit of oil all over the chip. Do another layer of tahine. Of course, if you're watching your sodium, use something like no salt and lime juice. Okay, so the tortilla chips are out of the oven. They need to cool down. So I'm going to let them cool and then we'll put them in our container. So let's go ahead and dish up everything else. So I'm only going to be doing uh, five servings because I only need to make six servings for um, breakfast because once I'm done at uh, the doctor's office on Wednesday, I will be able to make lunch and dinner. I don't know if I'm going to go into the extent of meal prepping all of that though. Um, I'll probably just make something quick for lunch and dinner. Um, might even eat out or something. Doesn't hurt to eat out every once in a while, especially when you eat so healthy all the time. So I'm just going to scoop one spoonful at a time into each container. So we get this as evenly distributed as possible. Okay. So now we have our salsa. Now there's not as much salsa. So we'll see how much we can add in here. You know what? I think what I'm going to go ahead and do, since I want to use salsa in the burritos I'm going to make for dinner, I have a jar of salsa. And I think I'm going to go ahead and mix it with the leftover pico de gallo. So 
but it stretches out the salsa. I have this jar of Signature Garlic Lover Salsa. I'm just going to add that to my salsa here. And that way we don't have to worry about how much salsa we use because there's sure to be enough for the containers, my plate, and um, the burritos later tonight. Yum. That just made, made the salsa look even better. Okay. So we're going to add our salsa to the containers here. Do I want to... Uh, I think I'm going to save the rest of the salsa for the burritos because I'm going to make five burritos so I want some salsa to go in the burritos too. These tortilla chips turned out nice and crispy. I really wish there was something else to go in here. Maybe I can think of something. You really don't need too many tortilla chips because tortilla chips are pretty fat. I mean, even if they're just oven baked tortilla chips. Maybe I'll put a granola bar in here too because I was planning on having granola bars for snacks. And I think it would fit perfectly in here. So I have this variety pack of signature uh, granola bars and it comes with peanut butter, chocolate chip, chocolate chip, and s'mores. So I'm going to add one granola bar to each box and let's see we have five boxes mm, I'm just gonna add them randomly I'm not gonna be too picky and we still have room in the box maybe I can find something else that we can add to it too how about a little bit more protein we'll add a handful of pistachios to it too So, there are my snack boxes, yummy, um, I'm going to go munch on mine, um, I'm probably not going to eat it all right now, I'm just going to munch on a little bit here and there, and have a Diet Coke with it. I've already had, or not a Diet Coke, a Diet Pepsi, I've already had one Diet Pepsi for today, but I'm going to have another one too, um, but yum, this looks delicious, alright, see ya. Okay, so now it's time to meal prep our lunch, and that's going to be some, um, that's going to be some tofurkey brats, and I'm going to make carrot sticks to go along with it. Um, I have five carrots here. I need to peel them and cut them up into sticks. I'm not sure if I'm going to use them all. Okay, so I cut up the carrots. I only needed three carrots because they were really big. Um, so we got a whole bunch of carrot sticks here. Now we're going to put them in their boxes. I'm going to do five boxes again. 
Okay, so I have these little um, applesauce containers that I'm going to put dressing in. I'm going to use French dressing, but feel free to use whatever your favorite dressing is. Okay. And then we need our fruit snacks. the fruit snacks are going to go in this side. Yeah, that fits much better. I'm using Welch's Super Fruit Fruit Snacks. I absolutely love fruit snacks. I know they're kind of like a cheat, but it doesn't hurt to have one or two little bits of cheats a day, um, as long as they're kind of healthy cheats. Try to make your cheats as healthy as possible. So I don't have much kraut left. This is all the kraut I have left. So I'm going to try and divide it up as much as possible. Really, you don't need too much kraut to go on a um, brat. So I'm just going to do like one spoonful per container. Need a little more in that one. I'm going to put probably about three tablespoons of butter in the pan. Let that melt. And I have four gherkins here. I think what I'm going to do is slice those real thin and add them to the um, carrot sticks and that way you could either put them on top of the um, brats or you could dip them in the salad dressing whatever way or I could. You can't. But <laughs> If you want to add some gherkins go right ahead. You could add more than uh, four, but all I have is four. Okay, so let's go ahead and add our buns. Up, turn them down like that. And really, I probably put too much butter in here. I could use like half as much butter. Um, one thing I want to say is with pickle juice, don't ever throw away your pickle juice, um, especially if you're uh, if you are a hardcore exerciser. If you do like a lot of cardio, um, pickle juice is great because when you get home and you're low on electrolytes. Drinking pickle juice will replenish your electrolytes like instantly. Also, um, you can always use pickle juice in uh, kraut. It has a good flavor to kraut. Or any German food really like goes really good with uh, pickle juice added to it. never throw away my pepper and sini juice either because that can come in handy too. Okay, let's see. That's probably toasted good enough. This one is falling apart, so we're going to use that one in mine today. Putting mayo and mustard on our buns. So I'm going to go easy on the mayo, just one teaspoon per bun. I mean, that might even be a lot for some. You can go as light as you like. And then I'm just going to do one squirt 
of mustard. Okay, it smells like those buns need to be turned over. Let's add about two more tablespoons of butter. Maybe three. Yeah, let's do three. That butter just tastes so good. And this is vegetarian. I've been eating a lot of vegetarian and vegan. It's okay to have a little bit of cholesterol and saturated fat. At least it is for me. If you're really watching, then you may, you may have to watch back on it. Our turkey butts. I love the way the tofurkey broths taste with butter, like it just brings out the flavor of tofurkey broth even better. Even if you're vegan, I suggest you cook them in margarine so it gets that buttery flavor because it's just uh, so good. Okay, those are probably nice and good. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those on the buns. Let's see, I want this one right now. That one looks bomb. Now there's a little bit of butter left in the pan which is perfect because now I'm going to saute my kraut. Yeah, there's some really yummy seeds in there. We have, um, let's see, I put like pickling spice in there. I put um, caraway seeds, dill seeds, um, celery seeds, and um, black pepper. I'm going to steal just a little bit more kraut from one of these containers here because I want a little more kraut on my bread. I'm going to turn that up so it can cook. Okay, that looks like it's ready to go on the brat now. And I think I'm going to put just a little bit of mustard on top of that again, because why not? Love mustard. Let's put our pickles on there too. Put our pickles on there. Every boss got two pickles at least, so that'll be at least two pickles to go on the... Sandwich. Ooh, yum. Yum! So I'm gonna go enjoy lunch and I will see you back here for dinner. Oh, I'm so full from that bratwurst. That was so good. I didn't eat my fruit snacks and from 
uh, snacks. I didn't eat the pistachios or the granola bar. So I have all those snacks to munch on if I want to uh, come around bedtime when I sometimes get hungry. Um, or I can just, uh, you know, leave them for tomorrow. Um, but yeah, been keeping up with uh, the dirty dishes. So, you know, I just keep the sink full of um, soapy water, it's a mess right there, um, and put all the clean dishes over there. So far, this is all the dishes I've had to do today. Um, and I'm gonna go for a, um, here, let me zoom back on me. Um, I'm gonna go for a walk over to the blessings box again because let's see how many steps I've got in today. Um, so I've gotten a four. You can't see it, but I've gotten almost half of my steps in for today. So if I go for another walk to the blessings box, I should get about the other half and um, then I can just get the rest of them walking around I guess the house um, doing dishes and cooking and stuff so yes lunch was delicious I think I enjoyed lunch the best out of everything breakfast was really good too and so was snack um, so now I'm going to go for my daily exercise and then we will get started on dinner. Okay, so I got back from my walk and now it's time to make dinner. I'm going to make some black bean and quinoa burritos. And these are going to be vegan. Um, but you don't have to make them with black beans. I know it's a lot of black beans and for like a week. <laughs> so... Um, if you don't like black beans, use pinto beans or, um, you know, whatever bean you like. But I like black beans, so I'm going to use black beans. Start out by adding my quinoa to my rice cooker. Um, you could probably do this in the Instapot, but I don't have an Instapot. So I am going to use my rice cooker. I'm going to use two cups of quinoa and if we have any extra filling we can always put it in the freezer to go in something else. Okay. Ooh. Mm, that quinoa smells good. So I'm noticing on the package it says rich in iron, a good source of fiber. So there's some nutritional benefits to quinoa. Also great for protein, that's why I'm adding it because um, being that this is vegan we want it to have good plant protein sources. Um, so now I'm going to add one can of chipotle peppers in adobo sauce and pretty sure this is vegan. Okay. Mmm, yummy. That's gonna make it nice and spicy and yummy. Then I have about half a tablespoon of adobo seasoning left. I'm gonna add that. And I'm going to add about two tablespoons of olive oil. About a tablespoon of cumin powder. Cut up our onion to go in the quinoa. Onions about done for. They go so fast in the springtime. I'm just gonna cut off the bad spots. Then 
You know, I really wish I had some other vegetable besides onion to add to it. Um, some jackfruit. I have this uh, frozen jackfruit and that could give it kind of like a pulled pork kind of texture and that would give us our um, kind of vegetable source. Um, let's see what it has for nutrition. Um, ooh, that smells good. Mm. Okay. Um, lots of vitamin A, C, Calcium and iron. Oh, it smells so good. Ooh, I'm gonna save one little piece for me to chew on now. But I'm gonna add all the rest of the jackfruit to the pot, pot and we'll pull it after it's done cooking. That will give it a little bit more like kind of vegetable fruitiness and probably a good flavor too. So we're gonna want some garlic in there too. So I'm gonna use, let's do five cloves of garlic. And I'm gonna leave the garlic kind of coarsely chopped like that big chunks. Be yummy that way. Okay, so we need to add um, probably about, I'm going to do about five cups. Mm, how about six cups? Six cups of um, water to this. Ooh, this is gonna be so yummy. Now we can always taste this afterwards, see if it needs more salt or anything, but I'm thinking because of the adobo seasoning we put in there and all the other seasonings, it's not gonna need any more salt. So what I'm gonna do is plug this in, let it cook until it pops up, and then we will start adding the black beans and making our burritos. Okay, so our quinoa should be done now. Getting close to it at least. I think that's a piece right there. There's a piece. I'm going to shred up that chipotle pepper too. Now, this is my first time cooking with jackfruit, so it might not be quite the right texture. I think I'm going to try pan frying it next time, but we'll see here how it turns out. So I think I might have got all the chipotle peppers and the jackfruit out of there. I'm just going to leave that to cook down some and then I'm going to just start shredding. How about we mix one can of pinto beans with one can of black beans? That way we get a mixture of beans and we're not getting all the same nutrients that we would get from just black beans. And I have this um, serving of uh, the black bean salad left over from um, snacks today. I'm going to just go ahead and add that to there. Um, 
Mix that in there. There'll be a little corn and onions in there. That'll be nice. rinse the beans again because I don't want all that juice getting in there and making it look ugly. I really wish there was something green in here. I think I might add some green onions too. I'm going to go ahead and unplug it first though. So I'm going to cut up some green onions. Okay, so we got our green onions. This is starting to come together real nicely. Now let's see what it looks like when you mix it up. Now, that jackfruit does not look anything like I've seen jackfruit cooked before. It is uh, very stringy, um, but hopefully it tastes good. In fact, we're going to give this a little taste test to see what it tastes like. Let's get a piece of jackfruit in there with some beans. Mmm. Surprisingly, the jackfruit does taste meaty. It's got a sweetness like pulled pork and a spiciness from the adobo. It's actually quite nice. So, let's get to making our burritos. I'm going to make the burritos before I make the potatoes and onions. Um, because I feel like the burritos are going to take a lot of work. So... Let's make our burritos. I have this vegan cheese here. This is Daya Cheddar Slices. Let's see how many of these I have. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. I'm making six here, so. Oop. How about I just break off um, pieces and put them in the middle. So there's two extra, so I should break one into three pieces, or two of them into three pieces. I'm just going to kind of break it there. That's probably a third there, maybe a little bit more. That looks like a third. So there's enough cheese. I'm going to go ahead and get the oil heated up on the pan, turn it on medium, put just like a tablespoon of olive oil in the pan. And then I'm going to add one spoonful of our burrito mix in the burrito. Close it up. Mm -mm. I might have overfilled it. Let's see if I can get it in there. Yeah, I'm gonna have to 
squeeze some of it out. That is just not working. Um, filling in the next burrito but this burrito is ready to go on once the pan is heated up enough so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna calculate the calories for the filling I'm gonna calculate the calories for the filling and um, then I'm probably only gonna use like half the filling or even less than that and I'll put the rest in the freezer and I'll try and figure out how much of the filling I used and um, you know that will be logged in my recipes on my fitness pal so when I go to make enchiladas we'll have the filling for calculating calories for the enchiladas Okay, so we got three burritos ready. I'm going to go ahead and put them on the skillet. Ooh, that smell good. That's ready to flip. That one's kind of falling apart, but that's okay. They look delicious anywho. I think these are done now. Let's uh oh my gosh, you didn't see me cook that at all. I'm so sorry. So yeah, I cooked them and burned them. I am so sorry about that. It's hard to be your own camera woman. But anyway. I cooked them on one side, flipped them over, cooked them on the other side, and they didn't turn out so bad on one side, but the other side they got burnt. It's okay, they'll still taste delicious. So here's my vegan quinoa um, jackfruit burritos. Now we got to make our... Uh, potatoes and onions um, so we are going to use the same skillet um, I'm going to go ahead and turn the heat back on to no I'm going to wait to turn the heat back on because I want to cut the potatoes first probably four potatoes would be good I'm going to leave the skin on the potatoes because that adds more fiber. Um, but it's your, your choice if you want to leave the skin on or not. Um, potato skins can have more pesticides on them. Okay, so I'm going to add another like tablespoon of olive oil. And then I'm going to get to cutting my potatoes. I'm using large Yukon Golds. Might add a little bit of coconut oil to this too, just to give it a little bit more fattiness. And being that it is a uh, vegan, it doesn't hurt to have a little extra fat in there too. Because normally you would be getting your saturated fats from your animal products, but um, when you're 
cutting back on animal products, it's okay to add a little bit of saturated fat from the coconut oil. But I don't want to overdo it because there was butter in the um, broths for lunch. But at least we're um, alternating what oils we use. We use sesame oil for breakfast, um, butter for lunch, and olive oil and coconut oil for dinner. And it's really important to have diversity in your um, in your diet. A lot of people don't have enough diversity in their diet, and so they're getting all of the same nutrients over and over again. And it doesn't really, um, it's not well balanced that way. So I'm gonna add one heaping teaspoon of coconut oil. Okay, let's stir this up a little bit here. I'm gonna go ahead and add some carne asada seasoning, and I think this is vegan. Not seen any animal products, so I'm pretty sure this is vegan. I like lots of carne asada seasoning on my potatoes. It's super yummy. Okay. Mix these up again. I'll probably add even more carne asada seasoning. That was probably about a tablespoon there. I'll probably add another tablespoon or two by the time we're done frying these potatoes. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start setting up my little bento boxes for burritos. Put a burrito in each box. Yummy. Okay, and then I'm gonna have this burrito for dinner. Then we need to put some salsa in each box. And I'm gonna have some salsa in a bowl here. Don't need much salsa because it's just going on the burrito. I guess you could put some on the potatoes too. Okay. Let's mix up these potatoes again. They're probably starting to get nice and fried now. We're, get back in there. We should probably leave them in there for another seven minutes before we add the onions. So I'm going to add like another tablespoon of carne asada seasoning. Okay, these potatoes are almost done. They're getting, I can cut them with a spoon. So that means they're almost done. So I'm gonna go ahead and add these onions now. Yeah, let's add 
add some more carne asada seasoning and another tablespoon and I think I'm going to add just a little bit of Valentina too. Use whatever hot sauce you like. Um, probably about, mm, I don't know if that's a tablespoon or a teaspoon. It's like in between. Let's say two teaspoons. Um, mix this all up in here. Ooh, that hot sauce really added to me. Yummy smells. Okay, these potatoes are almost done. I'm going to wait until the timer goes off, but they are looking mighty yummy. So while um, we were waiting for these to finish up, I did add a slice of lime to each box. And now we're going to add some potatoes to each box. Oh, we got some potato in our salsa. I'll fish that out in just a little bit here. This looks pretty yummy for being all vegan. Not that vegan food can't be yummy. That's one thing I've discovered. The more I've learned how to cook vegan food, the yummier it gets. Ah, all that cooking is done now get the potato back in the potato hole and look we have a gorgeous vegan Dorito feast so let's cut into let me zoom you in on it we're gonna cut into this burrito here because I want to see what it looks like on the inside. So, let's cut it open. Ooh, it's nice and uh, vegan cheesy on the inside with that vegan cheddar. And you know the jackfruit makes it kind of stringy like cheese too? Ooh, that looks yummy. So there is our um, vegan burrito. Yum. Can't wait to dig in. And then I get to relax. Well, I got to finish cleaning what little mess I have. And then I'm, I get to relax as much as I want for the rest of the week, except for when I go volunteer on Tuesday and go to the doctor on Wednesday. That's all I got planned. Maybe working on this video. But yeah. I'm done with a long day in the kitchen so let me show you the aftermath so I did all the dishes everything is all clean this is all the dishes I used today and then here is everything's all clean and then here is all my prepped meals for the next six days focus focus there we go so we have meals up here down here is breakfast and in the middle is lunch and up top is snacks and dinner yay and you know all it takes is one day in the kitchen and you can meal prep 
you know, for uh, however many days you want. You know, you don't have to just meal prep for six days. You could do even more and put some in your freezer if you have enough freezer space or refrigerator space for more. You can make it more for more people. Um, meal prepping is so much fun. I really enjoy it. And um, I was able to calculate all my calories. Uh, we'll go over that in just a second here. But um, I really enjoy meal prepping. Yeah, I think it's so awesome and convenient. I only have to dirty my kitchen like uh, twice a week. And um, yeah, it's so easy to upkeep. <laughs> So here is the completed journal. This is all my plans for this week. I added on um, granola bars, popcorn, fruit snacks, and trail mix because I have some of that around to munch on if I should get hungry. And then here's the breakfast, which is the natto tuna breakfast box. Um, so that has 631 calories, 33 grams of protein, 95 grams of carbs, 3 grams of fiber, 6 grams of sugar, 16 grams of fat, 2 grams of saturated fat, 5 grams of poly um, unsaturated fat, um, 5 grams of mono unsaturated fat, 35 milligrams of cholesterol, 890 milligrams of sodium, 493 milligrams of potassium, 40% of your vitamin A for the day, 99% of vitamin C, 22% of calcium, and 15% of iron, and that was seven servings. And then for the tofurkey brats, we had 983 calories, 34 grams of protein, 88 grams of carbs, 6 grams of fiber, 31 grams of sugar, 56 grams of fat, 12 grams of saturated fat, um, 1 gram of polyunsaturated fat, 4 grams of monounsaturated fat, 40 milligrams of sodium or of um, cholesterol. 1,992 milligrams of sodium, 699 milligrams of potassium, 651 uh, percent, I'm not sure if that's accurate because that seems a lot, um, anyways, of your daily value of vitamin A, um, 35 percent of your daily value of vitamin C, 33 percent of your daily value of calcium, and 16 percent of your daily value of iron. And that is six servings. And then for the tortilla chip and black bean salad box, we have 483 calories. 16 grams of protein, 75 grams of carbs, 10 grams of fiber. That's if you eat the whole box. Like today I didn't eat the pistachios and also I didn't eat the granola bar. Also with the tofurkey brats I didn't eat the um, fruit snacks. So that cuts back on the calories a little bit too. So where was I? 75 grams of carbs. Um, 10 grams of fiber, 67 grams of sugar, 15 grams of fat, 2 grams of saturated fat, um, 2 grams of polyunsaturated fat, 4 grams of monounsaturated fat, 0 milligrams of cholesterol, uh, 1,862 milligrams of sodium, 1,037 milligrams of potassium, 8% vitamin A, 5% vitamin C, 18% calcium, and 22% iron. And that's six servings. Then um, the ginger tropical smoothie, that's 561 uh, calories, um, 42 grams of protein, uh, 58 grams of carbs, 9 grams of fiber, 53 grams of sugar, 
12 grams of fat, five, 2 grams of saturated fat, 6 grams of polyunsaturated fat, 3 grams of monounsaturated fat, 25 milligrams of cholesterol, 216 milligrams of sodium, 1,007 milligrams of potassium, so great on the potassium there, 30% uh, vitamin A, 157% vitamin C, 82% calcium, and 8% iron, and that was one serving. And I did drink that all today. I am loving my smoothies. They are delicious. Sometimes I don't drink the whole thing in one day, though. Okay. And then the vegan burritos, we had um, 516 calories, so that, that was pretty light. Um, this is probably the lowest calorie meal, unless you, well, I, even the smoothie is higher calorie. I think it is the lowest calorie meal. Oh, no, the, the snack box is lower calorie. But anyways, um, so 11 grams of protein. Um, 71 grams of carbs, 6 grams of fiber, 10 grams of sugar, uh, 2 grams of fat, 11 grams of saturated fat, and that's from the coconut oil, uh, 0 grams of polyunsaturated fat, 4 grams of monounsaturated fat, 0 milligrams of cholesterol, 1,350. 54 milligrams of sodium, um, 50, 578 milligrams of potassium, and 3% vitamin A, 24% calcium, and 18% iron, and that was seven servings. Whew. So I am officially through for the night. I'm going to relax. And probably, I'll probably just have another soda. I might snack on some of those things, but I kind of doubt it. I'm so full. That was a lot of fiber for the day. Um, but anyway, that was delicious. And I got in, you know, almost 10,000 steps for the day. By the time I go to bed, I'll probably be at 10,000 steps. So it's been a great day. Um... And yes, I enjoy meal prepping. Awesome. So thanks for joining me for this what you can what I eat in a day and I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it was useful for you. I hope you have a lovely day. Bye.